Hello, everybody. How you guys doing? Um, welcome to a podcast by Corey. Um, for those who don't know, I go by all social media platforms by by.corey. I know that may sound very cheesy, but I had to go ahead and get out the way before I actually forgot about it. And I started to pretty much start the show, and I haven't told you guys how to find me. One thing about it, though, on Reddit, it's a little different. You're going to have to find me by you slash Director Corey. Pretty much the platform that I've been very heavy at. Been, been giving like a lot of love there. And I most definitely want to just shout out Reddit to all the pretty much the Reddit followers. Um, I just want to tell y'all thank you. Thank you. Thank you for accepting me for who I am. Allowing me to pretty much tell my story. Um, whether that's me going live. Whether that's me actually doing a podcast. Or even on phone calls when people actually call in on the show. Um, I know it has been a while since I actually have podcasts, but the thing about it is I haven't released a lot of content that I actually already have stored because I have been dealing with some family issues. Not making an excuse, but just to let you guys know a little personal things, you know what I'm saying, I actually have going on. Um, like I said, Happy New Year's. Welcome to the 2021 first podcast, actually, of the season I'm actually releasing right now. Um, I know I haven't even said anything from Christmas. <laughs> Christmas has been, well, Christmas was pretty smooth um erica which is my wife for those who already know and for those who don't know and paisley which is my daughter for those who do know and don't know really enjoyed themselves i'm actually um i felt as if you know we took care of business everything was pretty jolly pretty smooth pretty you know laughter it was it was just it was just awesome you know what i mean and so now we come into 2021 but one of the biggest gifts i would say I wanted to elaborate about is the fact that Paisley got like this, this awesome Jeep. And this Jeep, I know you guys, especially the parents here or the the big time uncles who getting all the toys, you know what I'm saying, for the family. Uh, well, I guess you say for the kids within the um, within the family. You know, like the ones that have like the remote control, you can actually control where the kid actually going and you control it. And it's like, it's also like for me, this particular Jeep, this particular gift that we actually got Paisley, it's like a two-in-one gift. It's it's like as if I actually got a remote control car. Even though I'm at the age of 37 years old, I do still like to play around, you know. And me being able to enjoy it with my daughter has most definitely been like an awesome um, situation for me. Um, and I be I love seeing her when she be out there in her little bubble coat with her little pouch strapped around the um, strapped around the chest, and she got like her little um, her UGG boots on, you know. It just look it's just it's just so amazing and so cute for me and it's it's just an awesome moment for us to pretty much be together. And then too, you know, we be dressed like both of us got bubble coats on. I mean I say you down coats or whatever. It, it's just it's just an awesome moment for, um as for me to spend time with her. You know what I mean? Um so far, twenty twenty one has been pretty cool. It has been pretty amazing, even though we all know we're still going through the pandemic. And, you know, like for us, the situation with the coronavirus, everything is pretty much just picking up from um, 2020 into 2021, things has actually been getting better. Um, I think for us within my household and, you know, my family members, we learned how to be um, extremely safe and, you know, taking for us precautions for us with the coronavirus. Um, i like to shout out to any condolences. Anybody that actually lost anyone um, due to the virus, I'm most definitely sorry about that. Um, if, if so, I would hope you guys will understand when I say I most definitely encourage you guys to wear your mask wash your hands and you know always think about um the respect and the health of other people even if you don't pretty much believe in that um i did an awesome i did an actual video um on reddit about that you know i really kind of take that extremely serious i know everybody may not be in the same space um i was when it when the pandemic first hit and you know there's a lot of you know stuff like for us and youtube and you know a lot of these conspiracy theories and you know, stuff of that nature. And I understand that everybody do their own research and sometimes we'd be very confident in um in our own studies. But the thing about this situation here is that the price that will be paid if you're wrong and you don't want to wear your mask, you don't want to wash your hands, you don't want to um I guess you say use the precautions that, you know, the C D C has pretty much um told us to use, you can end up you, you can end up losing your life. And I, I don't want that, you know what I'm saying, for nobody. Most definitely for any of the people that um has been rocking with me. You know, I just want everybody to be safe, man. I don't want to see nothing, you know what I'm saying, bad happen to nobody, you know. And that's something I pretty much stand on. And due to the situation with the coronavirus currently right now, uh, right now here in Georgia, man, it's, it's actually um, it's at its highest that it has ever been before. 
And I, I kind of really, it's, it's, it's not necessarily depressing, but it does places you in the area where it's like, man, when is this stuff is ever going to end? You know, um, people have been cooped up in the house, especially like as you say, your elderly people. A lot of elderly people, you know, they ain't taking no damn chances. I'm going to just be straight up with you. They're washing their hands. They barely even go to the stores, you know. And I can understand how they can be extremely stressful, you know, uh, for somebody most definitely of that age who pretty much like to go out into the garden and, you know, um, the flower beds and stuff of that nature. But for me and my wife, and I guess you say like, younger people uh, or younger, younger adults, you know, we still know how to go out and at the same time protect ourselves, you know. And it's still a little miserable, you know, at the same time. But, you know, we make things um, a little... I guess you say jolly around, just doing like the small, simple things. And we have been, um, you know, just being very skeptical about the hours we go out. We make sure that we look at the um, the peak of any store or any restaurant we want to go to. And I hope you guys are doing the same thing. That's if you're even going out, period. You know, some people don't even take that risk like I was mentioning earlier. Um, due to the coronavirus, right now, Paisley, we have actually taken her out of school. Um I can't say like for good right now, but currently this situation right now, our household, we, you know, I, my schedule is very flexible. So pretty much as, as of now, I have been taking care of Paisley and we've been going back and forth. What are we actually going to put it back in school due to the coronavirus? But um, I think she may be out. And I think as of now, I'm going to be her teacher. And I have to be honest, this is like a serious you know, challenge for me because um, what I'm learning too, as a parent, is being consistent and understanding that it's very drastic. That if I'm not consistent for us, her getting her studies, or me actually pushing and motivating her and not giving her to YouTube all the time, it could be I guess not necessarily detrimental, but it could be extreme. It could be a a, a huge hindrance um, to her potential and her intellect capacity. You know, I'm very very. Very, very, very kind of shook on that, you know. And this is at a time where my daughter had to, and my wife, had to rely on me. And I had to deliver. There are times I got to, I'm just being honest, I'm being very open. There are times as a dad, you know, we'd be lazy, we'd get ass to YouTube, and that's it. And we just, we keep it going, you know. But I know as of now, I can't, I can't do that. You know, she's relying on me, and she's pretty much going to be the result of the things that I teach her. And also, I hate to, I hate to think bad about it. And maybe I'm being very one-sided um, due to the situation. Let's, I guess, let me think positive. By me actually schooling her and being very consistent with her, which I am going to do, I'm speaking in the future, which I am going to do, it's going to be an awesome reward, you know, uh, for my daughter, for my wife, and for us, me, um, and us as a family. It's going to be awesome. Um, there are many different, situ- there are many different um, ingredients that allowed us to take this decision. Um, we're looking at for us the gas actually being spent um, taking my daughter to school there and back. Uh, we're also looking at not only the, uh, the cost of gas, we're also looking at the time that it takes getting there and back. Um, we're looking at the amount of sleep that we lose going there and coming back, you know. And over a period of time, once you look at all these different ingredients that goes along with um, being on time, um, your finances, all of those things, it just kind of makes sense for for me to be the one to educate Paisley until this coronavirus thing just is gone. I, I don't, I have no idea. And I know you guys don't either. Do not. I know you guys do not either. I'm sorry about that. But I don't know how long it's going to be. I most definitely don't. And I will say as a father, this is one of those moments where it's either sink or swim when it comes down to educating her. And, um, I know I can do it, and for some reason, and I'm going back, I guess maybe I'm going back being a little negative, but for some reason, there is a, a form of doubt there, you know, because I understand the importance of it, and I don't want to let nobody within the household down, you know, and I had to ask myself one day, because me and my wife have been also looking at different schools. We already had a school um, in mind that we're going to send her to um, after this situation right here pretty much eliminates itself both with the coronavirus and her graduating from and going to pre-K. Um, I was asleep one morning, and I actually woke up like an hour early. And after waking up 
early. I actually sat there in bed and contemplated like an entire hour, literally. And it was on my heart pretty strong. Um, just thinking about my, my daughter, God forbid, you know, catching the coronavirus and I'm sending her to school. And that was something deep down inside of me. I guess you, you could say the father instincts get there. And I just stared at the ceiling for a while, just thinking like, what if that happened? And understanding the luxury that it hasn't happened yet and I can still make a decision to, to keep her home and just tutor her. I don't have to worry about me putting her in harm's way, thinking I'm doing the right thing, sending her to school, but at the same time, going against the, going against the traditional modern th modern way of doing things and just homeschooling her instead of sending her to school. Also understanding the responsibility that I, I'm now embracing, you know, it had me thinking. But I, at the end of the day, I knew deep down in my heart, I didn't need to send my daughter to school. It's most definitely like the cases are continuously going up. Um, where you guys are at, it may be a little different. I understand, you know, there's a podcast that go out to many different platforms, many different states, many different cities. But here in Georgia right now is, well, Atlanta. <laughs> I'm in Georgia and I'm in Atlanta. It's one of the hot spots currently right now. And that had just been... It was just on my mind, like heavy, extremely heavy. And after just contemplating about it for a while, my wife also woke up and we started elaborating about it. And she said, you know, I was actually thinking the same thing. So with that being said, you know, there are sometimes, you know, it could be, you know, a, a form of, I guess the word is intuition. And then sometimes it could be something that, you know, some people may call it mystical. Some people may call it God, but. We was on the same frequency for a reason. So as of now, um, Paisley is most definitely is going to be educated at home. Secondly, you know, the vaccine shot. I'm not sure exactly how you guys feel about it, but um, I'm not, as of now, I'm really not interested in putting something like that in my body a little too fast. I'm not saying the shot don't work. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not. Uh, I'm not against, I guess you say, the vaccine thing, but I'm not quick to just, you know, just take something extremely quick. There are sometimes, you know, th there are some products we actually take our time to purchase. Like, can we get like a new, a new, uh, the very first car of this um, particular model? And sometimes they have recalls on it. That's cool, you know. But a vaccine, some and you actually put in your body, you know, I'm, I, I got to be honest. I'm not knocking nobody at all, period. But I'm just kind of scared to put it in my body too fast. Right now, I don't have an interest of putting that in my body for, you know, the vaccine. I don't have an interest in my daughter actually also taking a vaccine. Not even my wife. I'm not. I'm just not. Right now, I think we're going to just minimize ourselves. And even though we all good, we haven't had the coronavirus. We're going to continue to just to stay in quarantine mode, you know, um, less people, less handshakes, less stores, and just continues just to move very strategically when we out shopping and things of that nature. You know what I mean? So, like I say, man, I shout out to everybody that has took the vaccine. Um, that is a, a great form of courage to all the doctors, all the nurses, man. Thank you guys for pretty much holding it down, um, not just for your state, not just for your county, not just for your city, not just for your nation, but worldwide, you know, worldwide. You know, I, most definitely from this podcast, this podcast right here, a podcast by Corey, I just want to tell you guys, thank you for doing everything that you have doing. Thank you for um, risking your health to save others. Thank you for your, you know what I'm saying, your entire journey to be at the level uh, in the medical field the way you are to help people. That's most definitely need. I'm not sure exactly, I guess you say, well, what the government is going to do. Since, you know, with the coronavirus thing, and, and you know, right now we're in, the, in, we're in the midst of the transition of power um, from Donald Trump to Biden. And power, speaking of power, right? Speaking of power, 2021 has been one of the biggest reliefs, I guess you say, I have had within 2021 so far. And I've never spoken on this, is actually power, the only television show. This is the only television show I actually watch. 
it comes on stars. I hope um, some of you guys will ask, who haven't never watched it before, I hope you guys actually give it a shot. There are many different, um, I guess you say bootleg sites, you can go back and watch the entire series. And I get, you don't have to be an actual subscriber to stars. You know, there's many of them. I don't want to drop that link because I don't want to, you know, mess up nobody money or nobody exposure at all, period. But Power as of today, with me, is by far the best suspense, the best drama written show story. Uh, it's just awesome, man. For those for those who don't know, you know, I'm not sure if it was, if it was actually written by Fifty Cent, but it most definitely was directed by him. Um, but it's it's on point. So as of now, it's just talking about power and Donald Trump and the Biden thing. It just had me to actually think about it. So if you guys haven't seen Power, man, go check it out and uh, leave a comment. You know, tell me about it and tell me what you think. You know, and I most definitely will let you know. I will not stir you wrong on this. Check out Power. Um, back to I guess you said the vaccine and Donald Trump and um, on the Biden situation is. I don't know how this is going to do. I well, not necessarily how this is going to do, but. I'm not sure how this entire transition of power is going to play out. Um, as we all know, Donald Trump feel as if um, the election was stolen from him. This is, to be honest with you, this is not new coming from any president at all, period. I guess, to be honest, though, I think this is the only president that has actually um, had the courage to even say some of this nature. Um, I don't know. I don't know. The, the, the entire march to the U.S. Capitol, and right now, Donald Trump is having, like, two impeachments. We had a second impeachment actually done to him. It's it's extremely crazy, and, and to be honest with you, I had a call last night on air, and a young lady called in, and we kind of shared um, our mindset on how 2021 is pretty much unfolding from 2020. And one common ground me and her had is the fact that we feel like right now God is really in control. Man is not in control right now. And the best thing to do is pretty much take the precautions, force the medical, um, get close to who you actually believe in, and stay in good faith and stay out of the way. Um, there was one lady, I don't want to even put her name on that, but it kind of bothered me. Um, after Trump's speech, I'm most, I will play the speech. Let me go ahead and play the speech now. Now it is up to Congress to confront this egregious assault on our democracy. And after this, we're going to walk down, and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down. We're going to walk down anyone you want, but I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them because you'll never take back our country with weakness you have to show strength and you have to be strong in this particular speech right here um for those who don't know probably your first, you probably heard that he's he did this or probably heard that he um amped up everybody to march to the capitol somebody actually lost their life here I'm not sure if it was only one individual, but that was later that was that was shot. Um, I can't say exactly what was the reason for uh, what she had fought, but I got to be honest, whether she was at fault or not, I did have a, a strong form of remorse um, for her situation. I really did. You know, it just kind of put me in a place of understanding the power influence has. Currently today, social media is something that we cannot ignore. And to be honest, it's here to stay. I have been just sitting back just watching Trump, watching myself, watching others, especially on Instagram, how some of us have a charismatic gift. And we can speak and we can have people to believe in themselves when he had the lowest. Or we can encourage people to finish when they're about to tap out. That is a gift that's usually inside of a leader. 
that I think that we're all here accountable for how we use it amongst our people, amongst our peers, amongst our kids, amongst our teachers, our doctors. It's something not to be taken lightly. If you had a gift of influence, be sure to use it within a way that it would inspire humanity to be greater amongst the people that is surrounded by the individual. Then you later they lost her life. I don't know if she was a mother. I don't know if she was a niece. I don't know if she was a cousin. But I do know that was somebody's daughter. I just want to most definitely send out a, a, a form of our condolences to um, the young lady that lost her life. I don't, to be honest with you, I, I got I got to be real. I don't even care um, what she did wrong. I don't even care what color she was. Um, I just really care about the emotion that I had when seeing that footage. And I hate to make this um, a form of sadness. But the moral of the story I guess I'm really trying to get at is we got to be careful the words that we use because some people who may lack them hearing you may be a form of gain for them to keep moving. We got to be very wise with our words, knowing when to say or how to say in certain situations. Got to be careful. Got to be most definitely careful. I noticed myself even on Reddit, right? There was times when I was stream, I felt as if when it's 12 people or 13 people in the room, I feel as if that is my moment where I really, really can be extremely honest with people when I can really just, you know, I feel as if you know me. I feel as if I know you. I feel as if we have a strong connection there. And that's when, at times when I can really just pour out, you know, share how I feel, you know, and feel as if I'm not being judged. But the moment is like 5,000, 60,000, 90,000 views or whatever it is. I'll be lying to you if I, I will most definitely be lying to you if I was sit here and tell you like, yo, it's all the same. No, it's, it's not the same. Because I'm very, very, not necessarily judgmental to myself, but I'm very aware that the things that you say, it can be perceived the wrong way, you know. And many people are looking at you. And that's why whenever I get trolls, people that come amongst me, you know, they want to say this, they want to say that. That's why I try to be on good behavior, to be a light for those who don't know how to handle people that come amongst them the wrong way. Um, to be a light amongst people who do not know how to lose. Or, or people that come amongst the winner who has a soul loser mentality. You know, at the end of the day, we're all in this together. And we all have gifts that cannot be ignored. But the most important thing is how we're serving each other. Are we putting each other at harm with the knowledge that we know? With the vaccines? Are we putting each other in harm being with our charisma? Are we putting each other at harm with our entrepreneur skills, closing sales, knowing that an individual cannot afford it? At the end of the day, our gifts is to serve each other, to enhance our neighbors, put them in a good position, so that awesome currency, that awesome feeling that one has given you, you can pass it on to your neighbor. The influence that everybody carry, it may not be in speech. It may not be in sports. It may not be the way you dress. But you have a form of charisma somewhere. You have a form of influence somewhere. And sometimes you may doubt yourself. I'll be lying to you here right now. Secondly, I could be, I'll be lying to you. If I feel as if I don't have what it takes to be um, an influencer. But the more, I, the more I continue to serve people within the live stream, the more you guys continue to give back to me. And I'm most definitely thankful for it. Because at the same time, I am finding myself 
while I'm unlocking some of the experiences that I have. Well, well, the experience I have had and me sharing them, I'm helping some people unlock the doors that they actually got to go through because I've been there before. And as I listen to you guys, you guys help me unlock doors. So at the end of the day, don't try to be nobody else. Be yourself. But after finding your gift, being yourself, use it strategically to help everyone not hurt. Hope you guys enjoyed this cast, man. Y'all take care, most definitely. Leave a review. Streaming them all social media platforms. Streaming them all plats. I guess they say that's a new thing, all the plats. Um, I look forward from hearing from you guys. What you think about this cast? Drop down some reviews. Give me a like. And get at me. Y'all take care of this by core.